She spent the noughties building up our self-esteem through fashion as one half of the dynamic style duo, Trini and Susanna. When I brush against you, do they feel real? Yeah, they do. <laughs> the thing is, if I was the man you were trying to pick up yeah. and I got you in the sack, uh -huh. I'd be so disappointed once I got your kiss off. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but since that heyday, Susanna Constantine has added plenty more <laughs> strings to her bow. From writing novels to yeah. podcasting and wild swimming, she joins us now from her home in Sussex in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Susanna. Uh, it was all about boobs in the day, wasn't it? It all it was all about booze. And it's so strange, girls, because watching that now, I think, oh, my goodness, would we be able to get away with that today? I mean, it was, it, we, were just, we were fondling every part of a woman's body and we'd never be able to do that now. But I think because <laughs> what, why people loved you both and still do is that you celebrated women's bodies and you love women's bodies and you wanted to put them in the best possible, I guess, shape and form with the right bras and yeah. that type of thing. Um, you've got a brand new podcast, My Wardrobe Malfunction, uh, where you talk to guests yeah. about their fashion disasters. Um, your mm -hmm. own story, though, involves Prince Philip, a boob and a bowl of soup. That <laughs> is exactly right. It's, it's those, those few words sum it up. But um, <laughs> it's where the idea for the podcast came from because wardrobe malfunctions. We've all had them. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, how famous, we've all had them. And mine was spectacular because I was at uh, dinner at Windsor Castle, as you do, for, I can't remember, it was David Lindley's 21st and Prince Edward's 21st and Prince Andrew's something or other. Anyway, I was sat between Prince Edward, I think it was, and Prince Philip, and I was just eating away, drinking my soup, drinking my soup, drinking my soup, and suddenly... Prince Philip's hand kind of slid under me. And I thought, oh, my gosh, he's going for my breath. But he was lifted up my dress, which, unbeknownst to me, the two straps had broken, and my boobs were open to the public and a door in the soup. And it, a butler came in with a silver salver like this with two safety pins and um, recovered my modesty. So that, that is, that's a, a wardrobe malfunction that's hard to beat. Oh, you know, you win. You, you should definitely dine out on that win. one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you might. But have you heard some other great ones from other people? Oh, you know what? It's it's extraordinary how many people. In fact, your own Matt Preston, who um, I'm totally in love with, that amazing chef, and his was great. When he was 17 years old, he was wearing these very very tight jeans. And, oh, my God, look, there he is. That came up quickly. And um, the zip split. And so he took off some laces on his shoes and managed to thread together. I'm not quite sure how. I didn't go into too much detail. And managed to, again, recover his modesty, modesty by lacing his jeans together with a shoelace. And then um, <laughs> we've had Kristen Scott Thomas, who, again, the zip broke on her dress. And she was, I think it was at the Oscars. And she was walking down and the zip split. And she couldn't get the dress off and she had to be sewn back in with her uh, into the dress. She, sorry, it had to be cut out and she had to put another dress on. Um, who else? Jake Shears from the Scissor Sisters performed an entire concert in Brisbane, actually, with his balls hanging out of these very <laughs> short little pop pants. She didn't realise. Um, and then Jane Seymour was receiving her Golden Globe and she just had a baby and milk started coming oh. through and so she had these oh. two dark patches on her chest so there are some really great ones but what's so wonderful about it is that it gives it gives well-known people an opportunity to be self-deprecating and there's so many memories attached to clothes so it, you could lift up anything I could pick up anything out of my wardrobe and I'd have a memory attached to it so we go down all sorts of weird, wonderful tangents, like with Nile Rogers. We spoke for three hours about dogs that we missed and loved. And basically, mm. we sobbed for three hours talking about our dogs. And he had these amazing chains um, on his around his neck, which I thought were from Asprey's or Hermes or somewhere. And they were both his dog collars. Oh. And um, he'd never taken them off since, since his dogs had died. So really great stories that are in the podcast. Yeah, and you've got a wonderful way of drawing them out. Um, you've also said that now that you're older, the last thing you want to do is look or feel sexy. What do you mean by that? 
God, I just can't be bothered. I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've always been, I've always been a little bit ropey. Let's face it. Uh, Trini was always the, or is always the sort of aspirational one. I think women aspire to look like her, and um, women identify more with me. And um, I just don't want, you know, I'm nearly sixty, and I don't, I don't want to be seen as sexy. I want to be funny i want to be pushing the envelope and i want to be living my life and living it to an extreme and um, and i don't really worry about clothes so much anymore you're talking about trini you've said that that your whole life nosedived when your tv partnership with her ended what was the impact on you and how much of your self-worth was tied up in in your in your job you know, um, girls, it was, it was, I, neither of us really recognised it at the time, but it was, I think we, we both went into a period of mourning and it was like losing, it was like not getting a divorce, but losing your spouse. And because we spent every waking hour together and had done for, you know, a great many years, like over a decade. And to suddenly not have that, we both, we were always Trini and Susanna, so, you know, either one of us would be walking down the street alone and someone would point and go, oh, look, there's Trini and Susanna. <laughs> and suddenly we weren't Trini and Susanna, we were just Susanna or just Trini. And that took a long time um, to get over. And I think both of us, we get a lot of our self-esteem through work and um, doing the best job we possibly can. And suddenly, you know, that was no more. So both of us had to reinvent ourselves. But you are still best mates. Um, will oh, we... I mean, you have no idea. I spoke to her today. It's her birthday. So, um, oh. hey, happy birthday, Trini. Oh, hurrah. We've had Trini on the show too. She's 78 years old. How old, sorry? She's 78 years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Look at, I know, it's all that voice of Botox. <gasps> and good makeup. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's all it takes. Um, will we ever see a Trini and Susanna TV reboot? I don't think so. We're both on such different paths now. Trini with her amazing makeup line, Trini London. And um, I'm, I'm sort of, my life is kind of very simple now and I don't need that pressure anymore. And I love my writing. Um, and that's always been my first love. So, it's the children are at an age where my children are at an age where they think they don't need their parents, but they do probably more than ever ever because they're late teens, early twenties. And um, I just, yeah, I, I, you know, if something comes along, I, I wouldn't say no because I do miss making television. So I, I miss the camaraderie and the um, the concept of building something with a group of people and I, I really miss that but as for Trini and I getting back together again for a TV show I think it's very unlikely unless someone wants to pay us 20 million pounds or dollars then sure. that's fine we might do sure, it. Fair enough I, I just yeah. think if, um, if if big sleeves and shoulder pads can come back into style why can't you two? We are, <laughs> we are loving our chat with you. Uh, style queen oh, Susanna no, Constantine. Too. There's more to come as well in a moment. Susanna shares her secret seven-year struggle and what she really thinks of plastic surgery. We're chatting with Style Queen podcaster and writer Susanna Constantine. Last year, you confessed that you've been in recovery for alcohol addiction for the past seven years. What made you decide mm -hmm. to, to share that and what sort of reaction have you had? Um, the reason I decided to share that, and, and funny enough, uh, after what we spoke about, I think I really started drinking alcoholically once when Trini and I, um, we weren't working together anymore. I think that's when things really nosedived. But um, I decided to come out and, and uh, speak about it publicly because I saw the statistics of how many women are, in particular, are struggling through lockdown and how... Um, the rate of excessive drinking has been exacerbated by COVID. And there's so much shame, especially around women who are alcoholics, that I wanted to put myself forward, put my hand up and say, look, girls, you, you are not a bad person trying to be a good. You are an ill person who needs to get well. And... Um, and I'm, you know, I was quite nervous about doing it because I didn't want the subject to be trivialised at all, and I didn't want to have a oh, poor me, poor me. You know, I was an alcoholic. It was, 
you know, I'm very matter of fact about it. I still am. It's a disease. I've got it. And I'm dealing with it on a daily basis. And there is no shame in it. We haven't decided to be alcoholics. We are, you know, it's a sickness that has uh, one of the symptoms is drinking to excess. Yeah, and often it's those broken parts of us that make us stronger. Good for you for being so public about it. Um, I'd like to ask you as well, you also used to say that you would never have plastic surgery. Do you still feel that way? I'm what, a bit late now, love. Um, <laughs> but I would, ne I would never have anything put in my face. I would never have anything injected into my face. I've had Botox once and um, Trini dragged me off to get Botox and I felt like I was paralysed down one side of my face and uh, I got terrible claustrophobia. But I I wouldn't be against maybe having, you know, maybe a little lower lift. Yeah. We all do that in the mirror, don't we? A little bit of this, maybe a little... So something taken out, maybe. I'd love to have some of my boobs taken out because they're so big. Maybe some of my tummy taken out. But really... I, I think if I was 10 years younger, maybe, but, but now, no. I think, I think that ship has sailed. Well, speaking of boobs, again, we do seem to get coming back to these. <laughs> We're obsessed with your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> a random question. Why do you wear two bras? I'm asking for a friend. OK, the reason I wear two bras is because I haven't found a bra, a minimiser bra, which I'm always looking for, that that does the job and i find that two bras so i wear i do wear a minimal uh, a normal bra underneath and then i wear a minimizer on top and that keeps them steady and not like a waterbed and <laughs> to me they look smaller and they make me feel it more more secure i guess so um it's just just what I do in all, you know, everything to extreme, be it drinking or wearing two bras. <laughs> <laughs> Susanna, before we let you go, we've got to ask, what's your one piece of style or fashion advice for any woman out there who's watching today? Wow, one piece of... It's hard to uh, narrow it down. God, it's so hard to narrow it down. I, I think just... Um, I do think colour is key. I think... If you're feeling, you wake up in the, actually, I know what it is. If you, and I do this. If I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling down or I've got anxiety, which I suffer from too, um, I will dress up to make myself feel uh, stronger, more empowered. So I will make an effort, whatever I'm doing, whether I'm going to the supermarket, whether I'm taking one of the kids back to university, it doesn't matter. I will dress up and I find that does, does the trick. There no tracksuit pants in public? No tracksuit pants in public? No, that, uh, seriously, I'd rather walk through the streets, through the town naked than wear a pair of track pants. <laughs> never. Oh. I will never suit that low. Oh. <laughs> um, I still love you. Susanna's podcast is called oh, My Wardrobe. Oh, amazing. <laughs> and I hope, I hope to be out soon with the podcast tour live around Australia. So, um... And Matt Preston will be my first guest. And actually, you two can come on too and we'll talk about your wardrobe. Well. Yes. I would love to. We adore Matt we got Preston the colour well. memo. We've got the colour memo. We've got the colour memo. Uh, that would be beautiful. Yeah, you look two gorgeous. Weeks, two weeks in quarantine, but you can come. I don't care. Give me a ropey hotel. I'll be happy. It's all <laughs> worth it to come to Australia. <laughs> the podcast is My Wardrobe Malfunction. You can grab it wherever you find your podcasts. Susanna, I've got a couple of big girl crushes happening here for you. Thanks so much for joining oh. us today. Ditto. Thank you so much. And I wish you loads of love and a big fat kiss. Mwah. <laughs>